Hello there and welcome back to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Before we get to the pen at hand, let's just appreciate where we are. We're at our neighborhood lake here in Calgary. And of course we only get four days of summer in Canada. The rest is snow and ice and igloos. So enjoy it while you can. And back to the pen at hand. Today is a new experiment for me. I've already tried my hand at flex writing, putting a Zebra G flexible nib into my Jinhao 159. It was fun, but it proved that I'm no Spencerian calligrapher. So today we'll look at a different way to get line variation that doesn't consist of shredding paper with a needle. This is the Sailor Prophet. It is a Fude nib which is most frequently used by those writing with pictogram type of writing like kanji characters associated with Chinese, Korean, Japanese and other Eastern languages. When you look at the nib you'll be forgiven for thinking it was dropped on its head as a child. I know that explains some people's behavior. But this bent Fude style nib is that shape on purpose. This is my first Sailor fountain pen and I bought it on Amazon last month. I've been hesitant to unbox it and see how bad my writing becomes when it is more like a paintbrush than a fountain pen nib. But let's find out what kind of mess I can get into. Well, here's another nice mess you've gotten me into. With this Sailor Fude nib right now. <laughs> So oh, here is the Sailor Prophet, small package with a, a lot of Chinese on it, but it does say made in Japan. Uh, so I guess some of this is Japanese, well maybe it's all Japanese. I'll have to try my decoder to find out. But it is a Fude nib and I'm keen to figure that out and uh, it's my first Sailor. So let's open this box. So we see the pen and a couple of cartridges. And there's the pen. And it's very light and very plastic. So I will clean this out and ink it up and we'll give it a try and try my hand at Fude writing. So I'm not fond of cartridges or cartridge black ink. I don't think it has any character. So I pierced the seal on one of the cartridges, sucked out the ink with a syringe, and flushed it with water. Then I filled it with Eger Urbain 1798 collection. You have to roll it around to see it. Kyanite du Nepal. And uh, this is this sample is from a friend, Susan, a viewer friend, Susan. Thank you very much. It says must shake because there's some sparkly stuff in there. I must get a bottle of this. I've used it a couple of times now and I'm running out after using this pen for just a few days. Watch and see what I mean. What I want to do today is show you the parts and features of this pen, do some size comparisons, provide some measurements and a writing sample. And please stay tuned after the writing sample where I'll discuss what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. The first thing I noticed when I took it out of the packet was that it's very light and on the small side. Upon further inspection, I noticed, even though this is labeled a black pen, it actually looks like a deep dark blue, or at least the black has a blue cast to it rather than a brown cast as you usually see in black plastic. You might not be able to see this, but to my eye, the black plastic of my loop here is black, very black, where the Sailor, let's close up a little bit, where the Sailor is a little bit blue. I don't know whether you can see that or not, but it, to my eye, I see it. It is actually a very attractive cigar-shaped pen with uh, nice gold hardware. From the top we see there is a standard cigar shaped cap and a gold colored clip that extends out from that cap without a ring. The clip is attractive, sturdy and springy. It's very usable. It has a folded tip, folded metal tip 
and you can see that or not inside there it's folded, folded metal but it's folded very smoothly and so there's no rough edges underneath there to catch your clothing catch your pocket whatever there's a separation here that shows it is two pieces right there you can see that line right there I've tried unscrewing that uh, and it won't come apart but so I assume that that extra piece right there was glued in on top of the clip and uh, forms the seal between the clip the end of the cap and the seal mechanism the the uh, cap seal inside that we'll see in a moment the cap tapers up to a single thin band gold band that has made in Japan on the front and sailor on the back in very nicely engraved serif block letters it's very nice indeed there's about a millimeter step down to the barrel which is straight uh, to about halfway where it begins to taper away towards the end and then we see there there's another separate piece that is glued in and that's a odd looking little nub there very interesting must have to do with the extruding process on the injection molding where they glue that little extra piece in there so much for eyedroppering it's either fill your sailor cartridge with a syringe or buy a sailor converter there must be quite a big profit margin for all these companies forcing you to use their ink or buy their converters i guess the sailor profit is well named hey since i became president profits have been higher than Alyssa milano <laughs> what kind of cheap shot joel i'm suing i'm suing i'm on it i'm on it a converter might cost a dollar to make but they sell them for about 10 bucks i'm looking at you too pilot parker schaefer lammy and kudos to you visconti and um um i know there's others um i'm waiting thank you visconti for using standard international cartridges the cap unscrews with one two and a quarter turns to reveal a black plastic tapered section with a small flare towards the nib and these threads here are not sharp at all the nib is the main feature of this pen so let's take a close look at it the nib is gold colored metal i assume it's steel and it reminds me a lot of the german orienta student pen from the 1950s that i reviewed a while back although the nib isn't folded like this one this one has a folded nib on it of course this one has the fude nib on it but they they look similar in terms of their thickness and the material other than the bent fude nib the only other distinguishing feature is the sailor anchor logo and mf for medium fude because i'm a bad mother, mother hush bucket. let's look inside the cap here for a moment you can see down there might slightly be out of focus but you can see down there the cap liner and when i put the light in there look at that so that plastic is slightly translucent and it comes out like a purple now it's showing up to my eye a deep purple but it's showing up on the camera as a deep blue but certainly that will account for that overall blue cast that the entire pen seems to have the barrel unscrews and you see one of the two proprietary ink cartridges from sailor has a really nice arrow there that shows you you should be putting it in this way rather than that way because it won't pierce that way as i mentioned i took the black ink out of that cartridge and put in uh, the j urbain the cartridge actually isn't that substantial let's get the other one here's the here's the black one and it is fairly thin and flexible as you can see it certainly isn't up to the robustness of a pilot proprietary cartridge which seems to be a lot more rigid through the body whereas the sailor 
I don't know if you can see that or not, but I can flex that fairly easily. Now that might be good or bad. I might be able to flex that to pump some ink into this nib when I need to. But it also might mean that the, uh, the cartridge doesn't have a lot of longevity to it if you're going to syringe it. The cap posts deeply and securely, which is good because the pen is very short when unposted. So it's almost unusable for me. And I've got medium-sized hands, so anyone with large hands would definitely have to post it. It becomes a lot more usable when it's posted like this. And that uh, cap, it hardly weighs anything, so it doesn't back weight the pen at all. Of course, there's no weight anywhere on this pen. Even though the length of this pen feels good in my hand, the small, narrow section does not. I can't use my regular grip with this tiny section, uh, but I have to change my grip so my thumb comes up here above the threads and I cradle the, the section down below with my uh, middle finger and lay my index finger over the top, almost like a Chinese or a Japanese chopstick. Devil sticks! No fuck! Which is appropriate. Now let's look at some size comparisons. Okay, here we are with the Sailor Prophet. And here it is with a Pilot Metropolitan. And a Parker Sonnet. The aforementioned Orienta. And a Schaefer VFM. Now let's look at them posted. <laughs> And there they are posted. It's hard to actually judge what size nibs these are uh, because they seem to be all over the place. They're roughly around the number five size, but they're all um, interestingly shaped. The, the Parker Sonnet having that really wide shape. And of course the Metropolitan's typical pilot nib. But the Sailor is not the shortest of the group but it's uh, not the longest either. And now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Sailor Prophet and with a medium Fude steel nib. And the ink today is Robert Oster. Here is the Oh, shit. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper. And this is the Sailor Prophet with a medium Fude nib, which is steel. And the ink today is J. Herbin Kyanite du Nepal. And let's check the wetness. This is going to lay down a lot of ink, this Fude nib. Here is the swatch card for Kyanite du Nepal, along with Robert Oster Soda Pop Blue. I just got a whole bottle of that just last week. I like it so much. And of course, I have two bottles of this stuff. One's running out, and I'm just going to start the second one. Hiroshizuku Kanpeki 
my favorite azure blue but it's getting its run for the money with these two inks I tell you let's look at line variation now line variation is actually the point with this nib it all comes down to writing angle with a low angle to the page so when you write like this a low angle you're going to get a much thicker line as you saw when I did the wetness sample if you raise the angle up like this the thinner your line will become and of course all the vertical strokes regardless of your angle will be uh, thinner than your horizontal ones so there's a sort of a standard writing angle vertical and there is the horizontal and if I rise up like this you'll see I get a thinner line and a thin horizontal stroke as well if I go low with it I get a very fat line indeed this is a lot of fun and very smooth it really is like painting with a paintbrush very smooth and you don't need any kind of pressure at all and for our writing sample and reverse writing yeah I'm having difficulty getting any flow at all in reverse and that's too bad that this is not flowing this way because this nib would give you an incredible amount of options if this thin reverse line would have some ink flow to it that way you'd be able to get uh, a really thick line like that um, a medium line a thinner line like that and an even thinner line but it's not flowing at all when you reverse it and some quick writing As you can see <laughs> even when you're laying down patches of ink this pen really that feed really keeps up so what do I like and what do I not like so much about this fountain pen well with the cheap package and the lightweight plasticky cheap feel and small size of this pen right out of the cardboard packet I thought this was a hugely overpriced pen I still think it's overpriced I paid almost $40 Canadian for this pen on Amazon I'll show the the uh, the sale right here but it has intrigued me in a couple of ways first even though the plastic is very light the pen seems to be very well built the engraving on the cap and the smooth threads on the section as well as the solid clip show that uh, there's an attention to detail here there are no injection molding rough tags anywhere and the seams are almost invisible and smooth the nib writes smooth and lays down a huge variety of thicknesses of line I chose a sheening uh, sparkling ink because I figured the pen would naturally lay down a lot of ink and show off those features and it really does I'm going to insert a photograph here that I took in the sunlight while I was writing with this uh, pen outside this afternoon this Fude nib is a huge amount of fun and so easy to write with the pen however is not a great nib holder it's a bit too small for my hand and I have to even when posted I have to adjust my grip to write with it so that it feels uh, comfortable again someone with smaller hands won't have that problem but I have about medium-sized hands I'd say and uh, someone with larger hands would have a difficult time with this very small pen writing with this for any length of time makes my hand ache 
I'm also not fond of the price point. As I mentioned, I got it for $40. For $40, I can get a lot more fountain pen than this tiny, lightweight, cheap plastic pen with the funky nib. Fude nibs are available on many types of Chinese pen, and I might just get a few individual number six size Fude nibs and fit them into any one of my Jin Hao's or Moon Man pens with number six nibs. But the pen has turned me on to exploring full Fude nibs. I had only used the mini Fude nibs like, like this one in my Wing Sung 618 that was actually done by Bobby Pens. And my large collection of Pen BBS Fine Waverly Mini Fude nibs, like this one on my Moon Man M800 Galaxy. I enjoy the paintbrush feel of the thick then thin lines it creates without having to use any pressure. I'm currently experimenting and writing with my new Pilot Falcon, which has a soft fine nib and is supposed to allow for Spencerian style writing. I'm finding that I'm not very good at applying pressure while writing and would rather allow the nib to produce a line variation while I write with as light a touch as I can. That's why I'm so in love with this new architect italic that Jack Hernandez ground for me in my Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero Blue Hawaii. Yeah, didn't you do an interview with that fast-talking FedEx guy? Yeah, I ended up dating him for three months. That's a beautiful shade of lipstick. I bet you enjoy the music of men at work. You're incredibly foxy. Take off your shirt, take off your pants. Wow, what a body. That feels good. I'll give you a call. You better get tested. Which we're going to, from now on, call the L-O-I-M-Z-B-H. But I get a lot of beautiful line variation without any pressure at all in that nib. I'm so intrigued by this kind of stub, architect, fude nib line variation that I've started a project where I will attempt to grind my own stub italic and hopefully an architect italic from one of my many inexpensive Chinese nibs. We shall see. Inquiring minds want to know, right? Inquiring minds want to know. I want to know. And there you have it. If you like this video, Please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.